Hey, in this video, we're going to cover the medication Clozaril, and I'm going to do a nurse's review of the medication. So I'm going to cover pretty much everything I know about Clozaril, and I'm going to cover some information that I think would be helpful for those of you out there who are brand new to nursing. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll kind of have a better grasp and better familiarity with the medication Clozaril because it's really used a lot in psychiatric care. So let's go ahead and get started. So Clozaril is an atypical antipsychotic medication that is used to treat schizophrenia that is considered treatment or medication resistant. So anyone who's on Clozaril has already failed at least two antipsychotic medications. Maybe they've tried Zyprexa, maybe they've tried Abilify, maybe they've tried Haldol, and for whatever reasons, those medications don't really address their symptoms of schizophrenia. And so then they might be started on Clozeril. And I would say in an inpatient setting, in my experience, anywhere from 30 to 50% of patients who are on a longer term care unit will be on Clozaril. So let's say that someone has tried at least two antipsychotic medications and hasn't really addressed their symptoms, then psychiatrists love and nurse practitioners love to use Clozaril. In fact, it's kind of considered the gold standard of treatment for schizophrenia, but it is not more effective than any other antipsychotic until at least two other antipsychotics have failed. So you wanna pay attention to that because if someone comes into an admission unit, you can't just start them on Clozaril. Clozaril has so many side effects. I believe it's eight black box warnings. So it's a, it's a very potentially dangerous medication. And so no patient, especially if they're medication naive, will be started on Clozaril. They have to at least try two other antipsychotics before starting Clozaril. So let's say that a psychiatrist wants to start a patient on Clozaril. Well, what does that look, what does that look like? First, they're going to take a, a blood sample and they wanna find out what their baseline absolute neutrophil count is. And if you remember, neutrophils are the white blood cells that protect our body from infection. And a very, very small percentage of people taking Clozaril the percentage can be anywhere from like 0.3 to about a little less than 1%, they will develop a granulocytosis. So their bone marrow will stop producing granulocytes, which are the white blood cells that, well, I shouldn't say stop producing granulocytes, but it will be suppressed. So they won't, they won't make as many white blood cells as they need to, to fight off infection. And so they can become much, much more susceptible to infection. But again, that's a very small percentage of people. So that's why blood work is done first prior to starting Clozaril because the psychiatrist wants to see what their baseline absolute neutrophil count is. And it's measured in microliters. It's got that little funny U and then L, which is microliter. And so that is one millionth of a liter. So it's pretty much the size of a refined grain of salt. So if you took like a very refined grain of salt, you could put about a million of those into a liter of water, and that's how big a, a microliter is. It's one of those little small granules of salt. So you start with a baseline absolute neutrophil count, and then you start the patient on Clozaril, which is going to be the lowest dose possible. It's either going to be 12 and a half milligrams or 25 milligrams. And then within a two week period, the psychiatrist will will bring them up to what he or she believes is a therapeutic dose of Clozaril. And in my experience, I would say typically a therapeutic dose for patients ranges anywhere from about 100 milligrams to 300 milligrams, 250 milligrams a day. And then let's see. So when you start them on Clozaril, then they're going to have weekly blood draws for the first six months, and again, we're just measuring the absolute neutrophil count. We're making sure that it doesn't drop below a certain number. I don't think we need to go into specifics on the number, but we, the psychiatrist will monitor that to make sure it doesn't drop below a specific number. If it does drop below that specific number, then the close reel is, is usually discontinued because it becomes a little too dangerous. But again, like, a granulocytosis, very, very rare, it typically happens in the first four months of treatment. And then if a patient's on Clozaril for years, it's almost non-existent that it's going to happen. So blood draws every six months, 
weekly every for the first six months. And then after the first six months, then it's every two weeks for the next six months. And then thereafter, it's monthly for the duration that they're on Clozeril. So we have some patients who have been on Clozeril for years and they still get monthly blood draws. And I guess you could say that's kind of one of the drawbacks to Clozeril because you can imagine if any of you have worked with patients with acute psychosis, there, I mean, people in general don't really like needles, right? But imagine having to have your blood drawn every week. It's not fun. A lot of times patients don't understand why they're getting their blood drawn and you can try to give them the most rational, rational and reasonable explanation and it still doesn't make sense. So in a in an inpatient unit, it's not uncommon to see patients who are on Clozeril. So let's say they're involuntarily on Clozeril, they have to take the medication, then more often than not, more often than not, they're also on involuntary blood draws as well. And I've had it sometimes in inpatient settings where staff will have to come in, stabilize the patient so the phlebotomist can come in and draw the blood so that Clozeril can be safely administered. All right, so let's talk about side effects. And I'm not gonna go through the eight black box black box warnings. It's really hard for me to say that. If you want to, you can Google closed rail package insert and you can look at the eight black box warnings. But I think for nursing, it's more important just to kind of know general side effects of closed rail and what you can sort of expect to see clinically when you're working on the floor rather than talking about this side effect, agranulocytosis, for instance, that's going to happen like 0.3% of the time. So with Clozeril, the first side effect, I think the most important side effect to know about Clozeril is it causes severe constipation. It's one of the most common side effects of Clozeril. It's very unfortunate. People can get, patients can get bowel obstructions from it. So anytime you see a patient on Clozeril, you're always going to see them on Miralax and it's going to be twice a day usually. And Miralax, in case you don't, in case you haven't ever administered, it usually comes in a white bottle with a purple top so take the top off, you pour in 17 grams. Usually there's a little measurement thing on the other side of the purple top. Put that in some water, mix it really well, and then the patient will take it. And let me see. And then sometimes they're on Colace too, which is a stool softener to help them pass stool. So I would say anyone who's taking closed world, it's very important for them to stay hydrated and for them to take their Miralax. Another thing you'll see with closed reel is, well, actually I'll tell you a story. So when I was working inpatient, I was taking vitals in the morning. At the same time I was taking vitals, other staff were um, allowing patients into the shower. Well, this patient comes in and I was on the float pool. So I'd never met this patient before, didn't know him or anything. He comes in and his, his shirt is soaking wet. This is like probably 6.37 in the morning. I'm still kind of waking up, you know, and I'm looking at this dude and I'm thinking, I'm like, damn, bro, did you just, this dude just took a shower with his shirt on maybe. And you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's, 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 he has schizophrenia. He's disorganized. He probably got into the shower. And there are patients who don't like to get their hair wet, right? And I'm thinking, okay, maybe he's got one of those things where he doesn't want to get his hair wet. And I'm thinking, well, this just doesn't make sense though, because then his pants are dry. I'm like, so, so I'm trying to like make sense of this. Then I'm like, all right, well, let me just look over his medications. And then it dawned on me. I'm like, oh, wait a minute. This dude's on Clozeril and he even came in and he was drooling a little bit. So that's a, a big side effect of Clozeril is drool. And I'm talking profound, you know, excessive hypersalivation, I guess is the more kind of medically correct term. But I'm talking these, um, you know, it reminds me of like a, a St. Bernard. You know, you go to give a dog food and they just like drool. It can be similar to that. Some patients have really, really bad issues with with excessive salivation. So when I think of excessive salivation, I guess the two main things that kind of come to mind one is, is one, it's, it's embarrassing for the patient. If they're cognizant enough to know that, hey, I've got this like stream of drool that's, that's very incessant and is always there, that can be embarrassing, right? And then number two, I think of it as a potential choking hazard, especially in the elderly, if they're gonna lie down and they're gonna have that much drool when they're sleeping they could potentially asphyxiate on their own drool. So just something to be aware of. And then the way that that's treated is it's treated with these little atropine drops and that really prevents the salivation. So what happens is they'll stick out their tongue. You put usually two drops underneath the tongue, maybe once or twice a day. And that really seems to help with the, with the salivation. Cogentin too, or benztropine can help with the salivation as well. So constipation, excessive drool, 
Um, and then with, with close reel, something else that's interesting. So I can pretty much like, if I go onto a unit, I'm gonna talk about the side effect here, but if I go, say I float to a unit and a patient is drooling and they have a, a high heart rate, there's a very good chance, like pretty much inductively, I'm gonna be like, all right, I know this patient's taking close reel. And if their resting heart rate is above 90, and they're drooling, there's just a very good chance that they're on close reel. And what's interesting about close reel is if you read the package insert, one of the black box warnings is bradycardia, which is a slow heart rate. But for whatever reason, when someone's on close reel for a while, their heart rate, their resting heart rate tends to be rather high. I would say anywhere from 90 to 100 is considered kind of a normal baseline heart rate. So those are like probably the three main side effects, I mean, I guess with all antipsychotics, you have sedation. Closeril is the most powerful antipsychotic. It is extraordinarily potent, very potent. So sedation is high. Typically, patients will be dosed in the evening or the night with Closeril because they want to have energy throughout the day. If you start it in the morning, it's just it makes them too sleepy, and a lot of patients don't like that. And then weight gain. I mean, that's pretty much common with all antipsychotics, but Closeril can cause massive weight gain. Um, I've seen clients gain essentially a pound a day on Closeril. So in a two month period, they're gaining anywhere from like 50 to 70 pounds. It can be a lot of um, a lot of weight gain. So I'm trying to think of what, I guess those would be the main side effects. So we had constipation treated with Miralax, atropine, or I mean <laughs> uh, excessive salivation, which is treated with atropine drops. Then we have uh, fast heart rate, and then we have weight gain. I would say those are the main, the four main side effects. And if you go through the black box warning, there's a lot of different kind of cardiomyopathies that come up there with Closeril as well. So just something to be aware of. And that is why, again, Closeril is not considered the first line treatment for schizophrenia because of all the side effects that it has. Another, um, something else just came to mind too. When it comes to Closeril, another really important point and you really really need to be aware of this because sometimes it'll just get missed for whatever reason but if a patient misses their closeril dose and 48 hours has has lapsed between their last dose and what should be their next dose then no matter what dosage or whatever milligrams they're on they have to start back at the 12 and a half or 25 milligram dose and they have to be retitrated back up and that's to prevent orthostatic hypotension, to prevent bradycardia and all of that. Uh, if, if, if you don't do it and say you start them, say they miss, let's say they're taking like 200 milligrams a night and they miss the dose for two days in a row. And then also you give them 200 milligrams, they're at a greater chance for fainting when they're just going from a sitting to standing position. So that can be pretty dangerous, especially in the elderly. So typically what you'll see is if they miss 48 hours, then the psychiatrist will bump the dose back down to like 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, and then work them back up to their to their maintenance dose. All right, so <laughs> I'm laughing because I feel like I'm kind of rambling. I'm hoping you guys are finding this video helpful. Please thumbs it up if this is useful for you. I'm trying to think if there's anything else major that we've missed with Closeril. I guess what I would say clinically is that although psychiatrists seem to just love this medication, it's considered like the gold standard of treatment, right? I've read varying reviews in the literature regarding its efficacy and effectiveness. Some literature is like, oh yes, it's definitely more effective than other antipsychotics once once a patient has failed two or more antipsychotics, and then there's other literature and meta-analyses that are like, well, it doesn't matter how many antipsychotics it's, people have failed. Closeril is pretty much has the same kind of efficacy as other antipsychotic medication. And I will say clinically, I haven't really seen many cases where someone starts Closeril, and it's just like a night and day difference. But I know there's a lot of psychiatrists out there who can attest to the fact that, yeah, when, so, when a patient has started closed reel, there is a night and a day difference where it's like a complete flip. Maybe the patient is disorganized in their thought. They're having a hard time making sentences. They start closed reel and all of a sudden it's like, whoa, hey, this patient is kind of back to where they used to be prior to them being diagnosed with schizophrenia. So... God, I really should have notes for this, you guys, but I don't. But I feel like um, I feel like that pretty much covers Closeril. 
There is, as far as I know, there's no long acting injection for Clozeril, which is another downside. There are ODT, orally disintegrating tablets for Clozeril, which is nice if you have patients who are cheeking medication. And the name of those are Falco, uh, Clozapine, Falco, Falco are the or orally disintegrating tablets. And I don't think there's really anything else major that we missed with Clozeril. So yeah, I think we can wrap up the video. Please, if you have questions about Clozeril, leave them, in the, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. I really like looking through literature and reading about Clozeril. I am going to do a video hopefully soon <laughs> about the history of Clozeril because it's just absolutely fascinating. So we will look through various articles that talk about the history of Clozeril. And yeah, I look forward to it. So we're at about 16 minutes, which is pretty damn long. So thanks for staying tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.